Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 and Tech. We're here at Refresh 19 and I'm with my partner, Kathleen Wilson. Hello. And Tobias Goebel from Spark Central, VP Product Marketing. Hello. Thanks for uh, joining us. I know these uh, conferences get you know, kind of crazy and hectic and trying to find time for everything. But uh, you know, thanks for taking the time and uh, spending it with us. Absolutely. So, how's the conference going? You know, tell us a little bit about Spark Central and you know, how, how the whole event's been. Yeah, absolutely. It's been uh, really great so far. Um, we're seeing a lot of interest in um, really what we're trying to accomplish in the industry, which is um, <clears throat> basically taking what we all love and do every day, every hour of every day, which is using messaging channels to communicate okay. and taking that into the business. So if you think about how billions of messages now are being sent every day uh, with friends and family, but very few of those go to businesses. And right. you just need to ask yourself why? Like what's stopping us from taking that convenience of that experience of just sending a quick message, going on with your life, uh, and then you know, re revisiting when there is an answer and moving forward uh, into customer service and customer care. Um, so Spark Central is here to change that, to change how customer service is delivered and to address these more modern channels and bring them into the enterprise and uh, any company that wants to engage with their customers on these channels. And, and I, I mean, I, I guess I like, because I haven't heard it often said that way, customer care. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, we touch on like, um, you know, we'll bring up the terms empathy every once in a while, right. but I mean, customer care is, it's different. I, I like it. You know, I'm not sure it's different, I, but I, I do like the, the personal uh, sense that it kind of conveys. Yeah, and that actually touches upon what's so great about these modern messaging channels. Um, think about how every phone call today, and you know, everyone hates calling a call center. It's oh, not no, a pleasant experience. love it. You do, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with it is it's kind of this incident where you need to block out time yes. you know, for just the call. You can't do much else in parallel. Uh, and that's because that communication is um, synchronous communication. It, it kind of is real time. It needs your focus. But we're moving in more into a disrupted and time-starved life. So the form of asynchronous communication, where you can send a message, go back um, later, and kind of have it at your pace, is becoming more and more how we communicate. And um, the beauty of those channels is that you know once you send the first message to a business, it establishes what what I call like this eternal thread between the consumer and the brand. It never goes away. You can always, you know, sometimes I ignore my wife for like five hours. <gasps> and How does that go? <laughs> <laughs> and text her back then, but um, you know, I don't need to kind of reestablish like, hello, you know, like it's me. We just continue on that thread. And that's what we're used to. I, I would suggest that if you do that too often, you, you might have to reestablish, <laughs> it's me <laughs> knocking on the door. <laughs> Honey, I'm home. That's funny. <laughs> so, but, but translate that into business and you get a new, place where you can have a continuous relationship and build upon it. Right. So both parties, the agent um, that is maybe trying to help a customer over some time, over some days, or the customer can always go back to this communication channel, right. pull up the SMS app, pull up the WhatsApp app, pull up the Messenger app, and just keep asking questions or keep, you know, kind of contributing to this, um, you know, growing relationship between the two. Yeah. So it's Checking powerful. in, like, did I resolve your issue the other day? How are things going? Yeah. Right? Um, but what it does take a mindset change from an organization perspective because we're so used to customer care or customer support being a phone call. Right. You know, email is pretty modern, but like now we're we're thinking about changing. We're we're communicating on chat applications. Yes. So there's two things that need to happen. There is a mindset change for sure because you shouldn't be afraid of those messages coming in. A lot of people think, well, what if we open up WhatsApp or Messenger and all of a sudden we get these tons of messages and we need to hire more staff. That's actually not what we're seeing with our customers that have embraced it. And we have brands like Nordstrom and Zappos and JetBlue, but also Netflix and Slack. They all use us for engagement on these channels. And when they open up these channels, they didn't see uh, you know, an onslaught of customers coming with, with random questions. No, it just helps them to kind of have more meaningful conversations over time and build that relationship, which, and I've been you know, reading a bit on um, the new trends, kind of the macroeconomical kind of um, state of the world where customer lifetime value becomes more and more important. You need to make sure that you're getting you know, as much as you can out of customer, but you don't do that by just promoting to them and advertising, you do that by establishing a meaningful relationship. The second thing that needs to change is um, how you measure and track 
the Asian productivity, when you engage in channels that don't have a natural end. Like there is no end to the conversation. Both parties can just continue to chat. Whereas a phone call, you hang up, it's done. Or a traditional form of live chat, it kind of times you out or you know, you, they hang up and then you have to start from scratch if you still have the same issue later or whatever. Um, so, but we have solved both problems and um, we encourage everyone that's interested in becoming more modern with what Gartner is now also starting to call digital customer service um, to, to start, start small, maybe for a particular business unit, maybe for a particular product. Uh, we have a customer that started using us just for a new um, streaming video p um, portal that they launched in South America uh, with their own Facebook handle, their own Twitter handle. And it's working well and it's starting to see impact on the call center. Calls are actually going down, um, which is good for both parties because calls are the most expensive channel. Uh, and email, you know, you said it's modern. It's, it's modern in the sense of that, you know, it's digital, you could argue, but we're actually saying it's not digital in the sense that it isn't this kind of back and forth channel. It's pretty much the, the way of doing a letter, but, you know, with a computer, mm -hmm. right? Emails start with a formal greeting, big body, uh, things like that. And it's turning, you know, less into an efficient channel, more into, you know, something that ends up in your spam. Well, so it almost makes it more personal. It does. You know what I mean? Because you have that, as you said, you can ha choose to have that constant connection right. with them afterwards. And, mm -hmm. and the, you're communicating to that person in, at, at their re required time. As you said, it's like you're not like, oh, I got to sit down. Time and, and, and you don't know how long it's going to take. Right. So like, I've only got 45 minutes. Do I dare start it now? Yeah. Exactly. And then you'd rather not, and then you might miss out on maybe, you know, right. make another sale or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We have a, a customer uh, in the hotel industry, and we worked on a solution for them. And it turns out that, you know, they make a big effort to tell the, the, the guest whether breakfast is included in their stay or not. But guess what? What happens? They still ask that question, no matter how often they read it in the email or mm -hmm. whatever, because yeah. they need to know when they need to know, in the morning at 7.30. Guess what happens when they call the front desk at that time? You it's know, swamped. people checking out, it's swamped. Yeah. So if they could just message, and maybe there's a chat bot, some AI function that kind of sees that and goes, oh, I know the answer, I can just look it up I, I and tell you. I know the question, you. because you're asking at 6.45. Uh, <laughs> exactly, it's the time, it's, the, it's yeah. the nature of the question. So messaging is convenient, messaging is personal. Um, it saves money because it's cheaper to serve a customer on messaging. Right. And it's personal, as you said, in the sense of it's in my pocket, I use these apps every day. I don't need to be trained on using it, right? Mm -hmm. right? A website even um, was, you know, the hottest thing in kind of, you know, the late 90s, early, you know, 2000s. But now it's becoming this, oh my God, okay, I need to log in. Where's the login button? There's so much information on this website. It takes me too long to navigate. So a quick message pop up, just ask your question, let them answer, right? That's really it. And I, and I would think like in that, in that kind of scenario, you know, I'm thinking, you know, you can start moving towards a much more proactive mm. you know, model where I'm the one that's there, I'm at the hotel. And for whatever reason, I always ask at 645, you know, so it starts seeing my pattern. Yeah. And it's like, hey, you know, Casanova just never remembers that there's breakfast included. Mm -hmm. So we're going to proactively send them a, a, an SMS or, you know, whatever yeah. kind of form that I've used in the past. Say, hey, just a reminder, breakfast is being served 6 to 10 in the morning at this, you know, down in the lobby, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, that's really cool. And, it, you know, and I don't feel dumb asking the 10th time. So you could go <laughs> even further. You could do that, but you could also start uh, mentioning, hey, you know, right now we have some free spots in, in the spa. Yep. Or... You know, if you, if, you, if you want to have breakfast, um, go now. It's still low traffic, right? Yep. Things like that, which actually then starts creating new revenue for you. Right. So that is a whole different, you know, ballgame when you start in getting into revenue generating areas with this channel. Well, it's, uh, it's definitely an area that I think we've, you know, we've been seeing and hearing a lot about. I think the, the potential is just crazy. I don't know that we all fully appreciate, you know, we know the basics, you know, that we're being used right now. Right. But, and we know like, oh, yeah, well, I can envision some of these, but I, I think there's so many that we can't even envision right now how we'll leverage it. So I'm, I'm curious to see, you know, where this goes over the next, uh, you know, I don't want to say six months, but, you know, over the next short term. Yeah. So um, definitely looking forward to seeing how you guys continue your path. And uh, thank you for uh, coming, spending a little bit of time with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you.